Greetings fellow conspirators, Martyrs Vale here, and welcome back to Minecraft 1.9. On the last episode, we discovered this stronghold and conquered it, and now we are about to go fight the Ender Dragon. And I'm going to be presenting this video in a little bit of a tutorial format because, you know, I've been playing this game for quite a while, and even though the fight is a little bit different in 1.9, I still think that I have a pretty good system for taking on the Ender Dragon. So if you are curious about how I defeat the dragon, then the following video should answer any questions that you have. Of course, there are going to be other tips and tricks out there, but this is a, just a pretty solid, simple way to defeat the dragon. So first up, before we even go into the end, we're going to want to take a look at our gear. Um, this is the stuff that you're bringing with you into the end. First up, and most importantly, are your weapons. So we have the bow and a melee weapon of some sort. The bow, we're going to want two characteristics. Um, a high power level because we want to be doing a lot of damage we're going to be hitting the dragon a lot with arrows and the other thing is either infinity or a ton of arrows because you're going to be shooting a lot of stuff here in the end you're probably going to miss some so having the ability to, to shoot a bunch of high damage shots that's going to be invaluable you're also going to want some sort of melee weapon it doesn't have to be a fantastic weapon like this but just something that you can hit the dragon with because you are going to need to do some melee damage as well, in case you get into any fights with Endermen, um, which will happen if you accidentally look at them, having a melee weapon to take them out is kind of nice as well. So, um, after we've got the weapons, take a look at your armor. Uh, the armor, it's really up to personal preference. Uh, some people might want diamond armor, high level enchants. Some people might just go with iron. Um, it's It really depends on you and what you're comfortable with. If you think that you are really good at dodging stuff and you're not going to need a bunch of defense, then hey, just go in with iron. Um, but if you think that you might need a little bit more uh, protection, then go in with some diamond armor. I'm sort of taking a middle ground, earring slightly on the side of over protection. Um, so I have some feather falling for protection for boots here, which are really nice in case you fall off a tower or something. And when using inter pearls, these are really nice to have on. And then the rest of my armor is just uh, level one enchants on iron. This is probably a little bit more than you need, but I'm, you know, just erring on the side of caution just because, you know, I don't want to die while making a tutorial because that would that would be kind of bad. All right, so once we've got our armor and tools or armor and weapons taken care of, we have the rest of the items that we want to bring in. A pick is nice for digging down if you want to hide or breaking down some structures. I don't know, just good to have it. it doesn't necessarily need to be a great pick, but just a, a pick to break some blocks. Uh, glass bottles, those are nice for collecting dragon's breath. I'm not bringing in a ton because I don't foresee myself needing to make a lot of lingering potions, but you know, just having a couple is nice to have. Then. Possibly the most important item is Ender Pearls. Um, these are fantastic if you need to, say, um, if you spawn outside of the island and you want to get over quick without bridging over, um, if you fall off the island and need to get back onto it really quickly, if you fall off a tower and don't want to take too much fall damage, you know, these are really, really useful and they can save your life. So I definitely recommend bringing in at least a stack. Uh, water bucket is great because Endermen don't like water, so I don't believe that this de-aggros them anymore in 1.9, but if you get into a tight spot and you just place down some water, it can save your life. Uh, then as well, we want some food. Don't need this much food, but you know, just a little bit of food just so that you can heal. Uh, some blocks, uh, torches I guess, I don't know, I just had those on me. Uh, the only other thing that I'm bringing in is this shield, which is... I'm. I don't know, we'll see if this is useful or not. I do find it kind of nice for deflecting skeleton arrows. Um, project it's really good with projectiles. So I'm thinking that when the dragon shoots her projectiles at us, because that's what she does in 1.9 now, uh, we might be able to block them with the shield, but it does take up a lot of the screen. So I don't know, we'll, we'll test that out and see how useful that is. Uh, but once you've got all of that stuff together, you are ready to go into the end. So make sure that you sleep in case you die. Um, and that way you can spawn in a bed nearby and jump back into the end and hopefully recover your items unless you fall into the void, in which case you're basically done for. I guess that's, that's sort of the main, uh, the main question to ask yourself when you're preparing is how much are you willing to risk? If you bring in a lot of good tools and weapons and armor, um, then the fight will be a lot easier, but if you do happen to fall into the void, you're going to lose all of that. Whereas if you just bring in a little bit of not really good armor and weapons and stuff, then the fight will be much harder, but you won't lose as much if you do happen to die. So I'm probably going in a little bit over prepared, but it's really just whatever you want to risk personally.
But once you've decided that, you're ready to go, so let's go ahead and jump into the end. Alright, so the end has generated. Uh, we did spawn on a platform outside of the main island, so let's really quickly enderpearl over. And we're actually not even over there yet, so let's enderpearl over again. It's much quicker and much safer, I find, than bridging over. So now we're on the main island. Oh, and there's the other dragon. I think she hit us there a tiny bit. Are they mad at me? Oh, this, this one, one of them's mad at me. Um, and they're they're not too bad if you just sort of back away. You can probably kill them relatively easily. Okay, whew. so uh, we made it onto the island fairly safely. Let's keep an eye on the dragon. She occasionally takes swoops at you um, and will shoot these uh, random projectiles at you. You can sort of get her to go away if she's taking a pass if you shoot her. Um, but hey, here's the... The dragon's breath that I was talking about, so we can go up and right click it with our bottles here. Grab a little bit of that stuff. Alright, so now that we are on the island, uh, we can see that the dragon has some different attack patterns. Sometimes she's flying around shooting stuff, sometimes she just flies directly at us, and she has a very large hitbox, and, and she can, it's very hard to dodge that attack. I mean, that's pretty loud. Um, and then sometimes she goes over there to the middle. So, um, you'll notice that we are in the middle of a bunch of these towers, and the towers have crystals on top that sort of connect to the Ender Dragon. And these actually heal her, so if we were to shoot her right now, mm, that's probably not going to hit. We're going to want her to be a little bit closer for that. If we do happen to hit her, um, her bar is up there at the top, but she will just regenerate her health through these things. So you can see we did a little bit of damage, but it immediately just went back up. So, um, if we want to kill her, the best thing that to do is to first up, get rid of these crystals. And the ones that are not encased in iron cages, those are quite easy. Whoa! That was a, that was a close call. Those are quite easy to take care of, you just need to shoot them. And keep in mind the dragon is going to be nearby while all this is going on, so be careful of her. If you do happen to shoot one of these crystals while the dragon is nearby. Whoa, okay. Good thing we have Feather Falling. <laughs> um, then she will take some damage. But yeah, you can see why I like having Feather Falling. Uh, oh, whoa. That was kind of weird. Uh, okay, let's, uh, I guess, get some more of this dragon's breath while we're here. So yeah, that is basically the first bit, is we want to take out all of the easily accessible crystals with our bow. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and when I return, we're going to take out the less accessible crystals. Alright, if phase one went well, then that means that you have destroyed all of the crystals that are open um, on top of all the towers. And that's pretty easy, you just got to take a couple of shots at them with your bow and arrow. However, you're left with these two, or possibly more, uh, crystals that are encased in these iron cages. And these are more difficult to deal with. Uh, you cannot, you cannot shoot through the iron bars. Uh, I've I've tried either laterally or vertically. If you happen to shoot like straight up, ooh, that was close. So uh, unfortunately, you're gonna have to go up here manually to destroy some of these iron bars. All right. So once you're up here, you want to be super careful. There we go. Um, just get in a pretty good position. You can jump down, interpurl down, but basically just go up there, knock out one of the iron bars, and you can usually um, hit the crystal pretty easily just by yourself. Um, it's much easier if you have somebody here with you to keep an eye on the dragon and keep her from ooh, taking a pass at you while you're doing this. But you do need to get all of these crystals taken out before you can kill her, um, at least reasonably. So. Let's just do that again over here on this side. I actually got relatively lucky with this map because... Wow, I think I actually hit her as she was going by there. Um, because the crystals that were in cages were on relatively short towers. If you have to do this stacking up thing very high, then it's actually very difficult. Alright, but once that phase is done, you have now destroyed all of the crystals inside the end. So now, all you have to do is shoot her a bunch of times. And this is actually more difficult than it seems occasionally. Where did that projectile go? 
Um, you have to be wary of several different factors. The Endermen are going to be trying to attack you if you happen to look at one the wrong way. Occasionally she'll jump into the middle, and when she does, when she does, she gets very loud, and you can no longer hit her with arrows. Um, and so the only way to hit her now is melee. Uh, we can try that if we go up on one side here. Hopefully she'll stay quick enough. Man, she is loud. Uh, where's... I, I had my hostile creatures turned down already, but uh, I guess we have to, to turn it down even more. And she's still really loud, even with the volume that low. So anyways, you can just go up to her, hit her a couple times with your sword, and eventually she will take off from this position, and you'll go back... Whoa! Back to the, uh, the phase of shooting her with the bow and arrow. Alright, let's take a minute be kind of safe here and this is the main stage of the fight uh, this can take quite a while depending on how good your weapons are and how good of a shot you are if you're not a super good shot like me then ooh, I would have said that one would have hit then um, it can take a little while um, and particularly if you don't have very good um, power or power on your bow or sharpness on your sword you know right, there we go uh, sometimes she's a little hard to hit, then it can take a while, but as you can see, each of these hits is doing a pretty decent amount of damage. Still gotta be super careful. I cannot. There we go. And she's taken off again. Let's make sure to eat, recover our health. We gotta keep track of that as well. It's just, it's a lot of things to keep track of at once. Make sure to lead your shots, although it's sometimes hard because she behaves relatively erratically. Okay, so it depends on sometimes how long she takes to come to the middle. Sometimes she just goes to the middle very quickly. Sometimes um, it, it's a lot of time in between. And sometimes it seems like she visually glitches out. But just be careful. Always attack her from the side or from the back. You never want to be in front of her because that's where she breathes her fire. Oh, okay. So she's taken off again. And again, you always want to lead your shots, and it's it's honestly, it's a matter of either experience or luck if you're able to hit her. If you do hit her um, in the face, that'll do, I think, four times as much damage than it does when you just hit her in the body, um, but that's obviously relatively hard, so basically whenever you hit her, it's good. Alright, so she's pretty down now. We can go up and do the whoa, final hit. Again, gotta be careful. There we go. Dragon defeated. Look at that. Look at that shower of experience. Awesome. Okay, so now, Dragon is defeated. So, we're still not quite done. One thing that I would also recommend doing is if you have any mending items, such as my boots, or any of these tools in the bar. Um, I've never used this, but this I just made a couple uh, an episode ago, I think. Um, and I want this to be mended, the dragon drops a lot of experience. So, if we go up to here, our boots are fully repaired, this bow is now fully repaired, our sword is fully repaired, let's get this pick. Okay, pick is now fully repaired, and now the bow is fully repaired. <laughs> so I guess we'll just collect the rest of this. She drops a lot of experience. Um, I guess we could leave some of this in here, but it might despawn, so we might as well get it while it's hot. There we go. 66 levels, fully repaired stuff. Very nice. Oh, we never used the shield, did we? Well, anyways, that doesn't really matter as much. So as you can see, uh, the dragon has been taken down. It's relatively a simple matter to just take out the crystals, then take out the ones that have the cage around, and then take out the dragon herself, all while being pretty careful to not aggro too many endermen. Oh, there's also the, the egg here. Where'd it go? Okay. Uh, you can get the egg by digging underneath it, placing a torch or a slab or something like that, then breaking the block that it's on, then you can grab it like that, and now you have the egg to take back with you to the overworld as a prize. Oh, I forgot. There is one more thing here in the end. I believe, at least. Ah, over here. Uh, we missed it sometime during the light show, but as the dragon dies, 
uh, she will spawn in a portal here or a, a, a gateway a stargate I don't know um, and this is pretty cool I'm not gonna do it right now because I have a bunch of levels on me and I don't want to go into the void but basically uh, you can toss an ender pearl through there and that'll take you out into the outer regions of the end where you can find the end cities the course plants and all that good stuff so once you've killed the dragon that will be accessible and of course the portal back to the overworld will be accessible so that you can return home in victory so let's do that set up we can skip the credits okay <laughs> little bit of a glitch there but there we go back at our base safe and sound ender dragon has been killed so let me do something with all of these levels and put away some of this good stuff and we'll go back to the end and check out where that portal drops us well I am back in the end and I've built a couple of bridges just to make it a little bit easier to traverse all of this random floating islandy bits all around in here but as you can see much safer without the dragon around much safer indeed we just have to watch out for the endermen and even they are they're sort of pushovers at this point we can pretty easily take care of them in a couple of hits from our awesome sword get a couple more ender pearls for the road because we're gonna be needing them Alright, so I built this, <laughs> actually it's been a little bit too long on this, but I built a, a chain sort of thing to uh, tether this portal to the ground. Uh, you don't even necessarily need anything like this, all you need to do is toss the pearl through there, but I figured it would be a little bit safer to make our ender pearl toss from a little bit closer, because if we miss, and uh, as I've proven, I'm not totally uh, an awesome shot with ender pearls, if we miss and hit the bedrock, then um, we will fall into the void so I figured it'd be better to do this from a little bit closer so anyways once you're here and you can toss an ender pearl through you do that and here we go now we are in a different part of the end entirely so the the main island is going to be around zero zero and now we're about a thousand blocks away in the negative Z direction um, so that means Okay, that, that, that is not a sheer drop to nothingness. That means that we're now in an area of the end um, that was previously, well, it was accessible, like we could bridge out here if we wanted to, um, but it'd be hard to get to. So that, that portal transport is really cool. And there are a couple of unique items that we can get out here and only out here in the end, nowhere else in the game. Uh, first, you might notice all of these weird plants. These are the chorus plants and they give us chorus fruit which we can eat and it teleports us in a random direction uh, we can also get the coarse fruit which is at the top there you can break these like that and then you can plant this on in, in stone and you can grow more coarse plants you can also cook these up and make purple blocks out of them which is pretty cool um, but those aren't the coolest thing I'm kind of looking out in the distance to see if I can find it um, there should be some in cities out here and they seem to be pretty difficult to find they're they're not super common but sort of like the nether has fortresses the end now has cities which have their own loot and their own special mobs uh, we have explored this in the snapshots but i'm very curious to see if we can find one here in uh, this let's play because that would be super awesome so it's it's probably going to take a little while to actually find one of these in cities and so I'm gonna be out here for a little while just walking around looking for them and when I find one I will be back alright guys off in the distance you can see it there is an in city and even better it has one of those flying floating boats out in front which is what we really want to find um, I've been out here in the end for quite a while as you can see I've collected a little bit of in stone and then you just put it in a 2x2 two two grid like that to make in stone bricks and I've been building bridges out of this since I did not bring anywhere close to enough blocks but anyways our search has finally paid off here it is the end city and is it actually connected to our oh it looks like it's actually a little bit disconnected from the current landmass that we're on that's okay uh, we have more than enough blocks to bridge over yeah, that's, that's a relatively short distance, all things considered. There's uh, there's quite a few long bridges out here in the end now that I've been exploring. 
but there we go awesome so yeah this thing has a couple of new um, items and mobs in it and we're gonna check those out I guess we, we should bridge over about here looks good actually we should be using these blocks on this side of the bar just in case I happen to slip off um, because I have the ender pearls right next to it so hopefully if my reactions were quick enough I'd be able to turn around and toss an ender pearl up onto the island but you know <laughs> not saying that that is definitely what would happen but it's more likely when the ender pearls are right next to the item that you're using all right but here we are finally an end city it looks like it goes up that way so of, of course the logical play thing to do is to start at the bottom and work our way up. This thing is made out of the instone bricks that I've already showed you as well as this perp these new purple blocks which are pretty cool. Oh and there we have it our first new whoa mobs um, hey uh oh alright well I, I guess we're going now uh, the hitboxes on these things are kinda small but as you can see they give us the levitation effect which is actually kind of cool. We can sort of bypass the first couple of floors and just uh, get up here to the roof, which is where we wanted to be in the first place. Actually, let's go up here. Oh no, missed it. <laughs> okay, uh, let's go in this way. Okay. I, it sounds like they're still shooting at us, but it looks like we made it up safe. Okay, so there's a little bit more to the top here, I believe. Um, but then there's also some more this way, and I think this was where more of the stuff was, right? Yeah, there's just one room up there, and it actually doesn't look like there's a whole lot in it from down here. So I think we're just going to go this way. So over here, oh, we have more shulkers. Ooh, dear. This is going to be difficult. I'm trying not to kill any of them, um, because they're rare and, um, you know, don't want to... Oh! Okay, never mind. We're going up <laughs> because they're rare and I don't think that they respawn. And they're, they're super cool. They're blocks and they shoot projectiles at you. Like, come on, that's that's crazy. That's awesome. Anyways, uh, looks like we made it up here, which is where we wanted to be, I think. It does lead off in that direction. I guess we should check out this side as well. See if there's anything over here. Haven't found any chests yet, but I also haven't been looking very hard. Oh, actually, there's a, there's another one off on this side. Okay, let's go check this one out, too. And it looks like this one's a no-go as well. All right, so we'll just keep on going upward. We've got another tower on this side. More shulkers. <laughs> and there are no, no chests in that room. Oh, all right, we're going up. And it looks like that's the top. Okay, so it seems as though we there aren't actually any chests, at least in this structure, um, which is kind of a bummer, because usually I think these, these things have pretty good loot, but over here is actually the main thing where we wanted to be. Uh, that thing's coming for us. If we had a shield, we could block it. You can hit it uh, with your sword, but the hitbox is kind of wonky, so I think we're just going to try to play it safe for a moment. And let's bridge over there. Uh, we could toss in an interpearl, but I like being safe. Safety is uh, caution. Caution is a good thing. I like being cautious. So we'll do a, a safe little bridge over this way, just in case we want to ever come back here. I don't know, that really doesn't make any sense. But either way, the real loot for the end city is going to be over here in these boats. And it, I don't think from the exploring that I did previously that all of the cities have them. Okay. Well, let's make sure we get hit by all of these projectiles so that we can float safely over here to the boat. All right, we made it. There's nothing up there, mm, but there is something down here. Let's get down into the interior of the boat really quickly. Try to, there we go. Finally got one of them. All right, and brewing stand, two instant health potions. Not really what we came here for. But down here, all right, we have one shulker. I think we're going to have to get rid of you, guy. Sorry. Oh. Uh, you do more damage when their shells are open with your sword, which is cool. Hey, come on. Oh, come on. All right. 
good. And now we do have two chests that we can check out here. So first one, we got some diamond horse armor, nice. Some actual diamonds. And unbreaking three mending iron sword, that's pretty cool. Blast protection three, I guess we'll take it since we have the inventory. And ho ho, a mending protection three thorns one diamond chest plate, that's awesome. I don't have a, a mending diamond chest plate yet, so that is great. Then inside we got some more diamonds, some emeralds, an unbreaking three shovel, and of course, the main treasure, the elytra. Oh yes. So, when you put these things on your body, you can fly. Uh, this is this is super cool. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. Haven't gotten to try these out in survival mode yet. So, well, okay, fly is a strong word. It's more like glide. Oh. So we jump, and look at this, oh yeah, haha, <laughs> we could just fl glide around, this is going to be so much easier to get back, um, you can sort of dive down, and swoop back up, and just glide over the terrain, it's really awesome, these are, I'm super pumped about getting to use these, so, let me try to make it back, to the overworld. Uh, it's going to take me a little while to actually make it back because um, I guess we could have tried to glide from all the way up there but I just wanted to show off the elytra. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to walk back the long way even though I can fly now. You know, I think uh, there's a bridge over here and then there's more over that way. You know, I, Like I said at the beginning of this clip I have made tons and tons of bridges um, just trying to gets to different places. It's it's difficult exploring the end when it's just made up of these floating islands, but now that we have the elytra, it should be much, much simpler. All we have to do is just go up to a high point, um, you know, just tap bridge up or stack up or tower up or whatever you want to call it, and um, then we've got the elytra. Just jump off and fly. The one important thing that I suppose I should note is that the elytra um, do take durability damage as you fly. Um, I forget for every second or every tick or however much durability it takes. So we want to put mending on this as quickly as possible. And I am going to go do just that. Alright, we made it back safe. Managed to not fall into the void with all of this awesome loot, particularly the elytra. So let's go over here. I set aside a mending book particularly for this. Let's see, how much will that cost to put on? Just two levels for mending? Nice! And then I know somewhere I have, oh, there's one right there, an Unbreaking 3 book. Um, just to ease it up the load that we put on the mending so that it doesn't use as much durability. Awesome, there we go. So now we'll pop those on and let's see, there's got to be somewhere around here that we can take a fly uh, let's see. Oh my goodness. Hey, there's a ladder over here. I wonder I wonder where this leads to. Oh, that's right. We did make our base in a mountain. Huh. That's kind of cool. Man, that sure worked out great, didn't it? <laughs> okay, so yeah, I, I, I did sort of plan this out when I knew um, when we started this like 1.9. Yeah, we've got the elytra. Of course, we want a mountain base. A, it's going to look cool, but B, dude, we have the elytra. We can just sort of fly around up top. It's going to be amazing. So let's go to the very peak of the world here, or at least the, the very peak of this area of the world. Look around at all of the beautiful landscape that surrounds our base, and let's jump and fly. <laughs> oh, this is so cool. So yeah, elytra are amazing and the end is very profitable to go to now. We can, we can get good loot, um, and defeating the dragon actually has a purpose, which is awesome. And I'm super glad that we've got this stuff now, and yeah, it's, this has just been a very profitable episode, I would say. So anyways, guys, thank you very much for watching. Hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, then please hit the like button and consider subscribing, and I will see you in the next video.